day three here at uh, Blues Fest, and once again we're backstage at the subway stage. We've got some great singer-songwriters happening uh, this evening. Uh, sitting right behind me here is Brock Seaman, one of uh, the Ottawa area's finest uh, aspiring singer-songwriters, and I don't even know if I can call him aspiring because he's already got seven albums out in the last uh, six years. But why don't we just go over and check in with him and see how his Blues Fest experience is going so far. Brock. Sorry to interrupt you. How are you doing? Not too bad. How are you? I'm doing fine. How's your Blues Fest experience going today? Good, hot. Good and hot. Yeah. There's no rain. Yeah. Uh, you're an aspiring singer-songwriter, right? Uh, and it's uh, a craft that you got to develop. Yeah, yeah, almost. Yeah. <laughs> Trying my best. What would you say if I said there's an opportunity here this evening for you to sit down with one of the finest singer-songwriters around today uh, and chat with him about songwriting and maybe pose to him some of your questions about the craft of songwriting? I'd say point me in the right direction. If I said the right direction was Steve Earle's uh, trailer back here. Okay, <laughs> right on. Let's right. head on over. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Steve Earl, and uh, I never thought I'd be sitting here with Steve Earl. And uh, hi, how are you? <laughs> Quite good. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Uh, I I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Uh, first one I want to ask. Uh, I've written a lot of songs, and uh, I'm just wondering what your process would be for writing songs. Oh God, I mean, it, it, to keep writing them for any length of time. You know, it requires that I change that up quite a bit. I mean, I, I write, you know, some songs exist because of an idea uh, that's, you know, I mean, a, a lyrical idea. You know, I mean, sometimes it's it's as simple as a hook, as as they say. Sometimes it's it's something in particular that I want to get said, and you know, how I say it, or I, I arrive at later. Sometimes it's it's purely musical. Um, I, the mountain. I started out to write a whole record of original bluegrass material. That was the whole idea. So that was completely and totally musically driven. So it's, you know, it's, it's keeping myself interested in it enough to do it, you know, every single time. So I've, for me, um, my tolerance for boredom is pretty low. So that's required that I sort of change things up quite a bit. Over. Um, uh, okay, I was also wondering, because I, uh, I read your book. Uh, I read, actually, the... Uh, the life and near death of Steve Earl and uh, which is not my book. That's, that's not one. yours, yeah. but uh, the other one was Doghouse Roses. Yeah, was, that's a collection of short fiction. That I and wrote. how do you feel? How's the process from going from writing songs where it's very, you know, you have to rhyme, you know, you have structure to doing whatever you want. Well, Just, you don't have to rhyme. Um, it's not. Um, I mean, it, one of my the best songs I've ever heard was uh, a song by David Only called Saturday Night and Sunday Morning, and there's not a rhyme in it anywhere. And I didn't, I've been singing it for years before I discovered that. But, you know, the first thing is, you know, Allen Ginsberg said that it's meaningless to break meter until you learn to write meter in the first place. And, and I think that's true. So, I, I mean, I, for me, it's been tough because I've got an eighth grade education. So I sort of learned by emulating other songwriters to begin with. And then, you know, I backtrack to all the stuff I do that's outside of music. So, it's not. Uh, it, it's been hard. It's been. It's been. It's been really hard work. But you know, I mean, I. On the other hand, myself today, I've read every single word that that William Shakespeare is known to have written, and and I'm not one of these people that believe that he didn't write any of it because I, I mean, the you know, people base that on the idea that that it's just too good to have been written by one person. To, to me, it doesn't make, that makes absolutely no sense. It, it makes no sense to me that there was more than one person that smart in Elizabethan England from everything that I've ever read about Elizabethan <laughs> England besides William Shakespeare itself. So it's, uh, it's you know, there are real life, you know, um, aliens like that that pop up every once in a while, and I think he was one of them. And uh, last question, uh, I was wondering uh, if the new record, Towns, I was really excited to hear that you're doing one. Uh, but did that bring up any weird things from the past or, you know? Um, not weird things. I, I mean, I wasn't as, I wasn't anywhere near as complete processing losing towns 12 years ago as I thought I was until I started this. So I, I, it turns out I needed to do it. And I thought about doing it. I talked about doing it for some time. And, um, you know, it was just, uh, it turned out to be, um, 
you know, I, I decided, well, I could finish my novel if I didn't have to write songs for a record this time. So maybe now is finally the time to do it. So, um, but it's it's been it's you know, just nothing could have prepared me for for the experience that it's been. From the minute I sat in the chair and started recording songs, it was much more emotional than I counted on it being. And I don't know why. I don't know why I didn't think it would be that, but I just never thought about it. And and the experience of going out and playing these songs for people and people's reaction to it, is, which has been really positive. I mean, it's. It's like the the most records we've sold, you know, coming out of the box in a long time, which hurts the singer songwriter's feelings a little bit. But it's it's actually it's okay. It's a big gift from Towns, and, and it's been it's been a great experience. So we've just left the, the trailer, and uh, Brock, you weren't weren't shaking too much there, were you? I saw that mic shaking, and it was all I could do to stop. It was it was that's pretty cool, man. I've never met one of my heroes before, so yeah, it was great. Yeah. Any insights for you in there? I was too busy worrying about the microphone shaking. You know, I met Merle Haggard once, and I could—I didn't even talk to him. I just handed him something to sign. But uh, that was a really cool opportunity. It was really good. Thank you. Have a great set tonight. Thanks for doing that. Thank you, man.